Good morning. Welcome to day 60. Day 60. Wednesday, Wednesday, June 5th, 2024. We're going to be making our way up to Glen Pass. It is 43 degrees. Hopefully the snow will be nice and firm till we get up and down the pass. Um, I had a neighbor camping next next to me last night. He's already gone. Didn't even hear him. Slept well. Um, for some reason, I started sneezing a lot last night. I don't know what I could possibly be allergic to here. Um, but yeah, a lot of sneezing. It's not a cold or anything. It's just something like I'm allergic to. Maybe pollen. I don't know. Um, so yeah, other than that, we're ready to start marching on up, so let's go. All right, we're about to hit a little slopey section that I have an ice axe. I'm going to break it out. So this is Glen Pass. You can kind of make out some of the switchbacks, some of the snowy ones going up. So that's where we're headed. All right, we just traversed that sloping snowfield with the beautiful icy lake down below. Sarah and I have camped. There's trees down there. And when the snow's not there, there's a few nice places to camp. So keep climbing. All right, more snowfields. I don't know if the camera will do it justice, but yeah, it's a pretty nice angle going down there. So, making sure you have all points of contact. We are way above the lake now. Getting close to the top. All right, we just passed one section where the trailblazers who set the path in snow weren't on trail for a while, which was probably fine when there was a bunch of snow, but it made for a little scrambly section to regain the trail and all this rock is super loose scree so not anything sketchy but just something to look out for it didn't feel like i was on a trail and the trail was above We made it, Glen Pass, amazing. Whew. All right, so we're gonna head down that path there. The last couple of times we were here, Sarah and I, there were actually two paths, a high path and a low path. Looks like there's only one this time, so that makes the choice easy. But um, yeah, nice, slow and steady, getting down to Ray Lakes before the snow gets too mushy. All right, here we go. see someone doing a glissade down. That's not for me. And there's the top of the pass. It's already a hot one out here and it's, I don't think it's even seven o'clock yet. So I'm gonna lose the ice axe for now, get the trekking poles on and uh, keep them all marching. Uh, you can see a group of five making their way down on the first big switchback. All right, we just had a little something to eat, put on some sunscreen, saying goodbye to Glen Pass as we make our way to Ray Lakes, pretty much in the snow, I think it'll be for a while. 
right, we're getting our first nice view of Upper Ray Lake. As our trail runners are soaking wet, already gambled on a snow bridge and lost. Plus half the trails are running stream and or snow. So you just gotta accept wet feet in this uh, environment, which is fine. Just gotta remember to air them out every once in a while, give them a break. They get super pruney if you go a full like 10 hours, but yeah. Down, down we go before we go back up, up and down. So the other through hiker that was camped near me last night, he was a really good guy. Um, we took pictures of each other on the top of Glen Pass. And he was saying, you know, he's glad he didn't try to do it yesterday. We both kind of arrived at our campsite area around 2.30, 3, something like that. Um, yeah, it did not really freeze last night. Outside, the thermometer was 42. So, no refreeze already coming down um, Glen Pass. The snow was already kind of slipping and sliding a bit. And that couldn't have been more than um, 7 o'clock or a little before. So, hopefully, we get a couple more cold nights. Uh, especially for... Um, I think it's Mayer Pass or Mather Pass. I think that's the last trickier one. Um, but yeah, my guy, he's gonna try and do Pincho Pass today. That'd be like a 20 mile day with the, the melty snow. Good luck to him. No ice axe and one trekking pole. He's uh, doing, it, doing it his way. As long as it works out for him, that's all that matters. I, I think I really, feel a lot more comfortable with the ice axe especially coming down some of these passes for sure so I really haven't been paying attention there's really not any ice on the trail except for right there as I was pulling out my phone I took a little spill it got me anyway I was going to say because it was a little seasonal stream crossing it's funny how even though my feet are soaking wet you still try to get across the stream crossing without getting wet. It's like a psychological thing. Look at this view of the lake we're getting now. Oh boy, not much ice left on it. It's looking good, Upper Ray Lake. Hitting the junction for one of my favorite places in the Sierras, the 60 Lakes Basin. There's a use trail for a little bit, and then most of it is off trail. There's just some amazing camping back there, off trail exploring, and it doesn't get a whole lot of visitors. So highly recommend checking it out if um, you're ever in this area. Spend a night or two there. You won't be disappointed. So there's a water crossing in between upper and middle Ray Lake. Usually would stop and put on Crocs, but I think we're already soaking wet. I just said, screw it, went through. So, cause there's still, we're still gonna have snow on the trail for a while. Um, and then hopefully if I go as far as I want, we'll have snow at the end of the day, but I'll make sure I stop and air out everything for a good 10, 15 minutes, but just didn't feel like it was worth it with my feet being so wet. So this is just a fantastic area. It's surreal to me because Sarah and I have done this Ray Lakes loop a bunch of times and I've always, what's the right word? Fantasized, daydreamed about coming through here on a through hike. And here I am, it's, it's wild. I can't even explain. Amazing. Cool little feature in these points. Say hello to Thin Dome. All right, we're still traversing middle Ray Lake. It's huge and it's blue. 
not much or any ice on this one. All right, so it's nine o'clock. So we've been going for three and a half hours, right? Yeah, go take a first real break here, air out the feet, have a little bacon jerky. Look at this amazing view I have for my lunch break or I guess morning break. Not too shabby, huh? It's a restoration area. Used to be able to camp here at Middle Ray Lake, but still pretty amazing. I guess while I'm thinking about it, it's probably a good time for a quick um, logistics update. So we're in day nine of this segment of our uh, trip. So we've been out, out in the back country for nine. This is the ninth day. Um, I just kicked my first butane canister this morning. I knew it was coming. I've been getting 42 boils. This one only I got, only got 41. I think part of it is just the higher elevations. It's colder. And also I didn't have as many like one cup or one and a half cup boils a lot. Most of them were two cup full boils. So it takes a little more gas. So I have one propane canister left. Um, my two 10,000 battery packs are toast. I'm probably halfway through my first 20,000 and I've got two other 20,000s. Um, I bring a lot of battery power just so I can keep recording video um, mainly. That's the main reason. So ever since I've been in the Sierras, um, I really haven't been listening to anything the first half of the day, either because it's doing some technical stuff with the passes or just because I'm in the Sierras. So it's, um, without even thinking about it, I'm actually saving some juice uh, for my battery packs. Um, I don't think it's gonna be an issue, but um, I'm gonna keep on top of it to make sure that I have enough power for continuing to record videos and also to have far out available. So that shouldn't be a problem. That's the logistics update. Still good on dinners and um, snacking food and all that. I'm probably gonna run out of cliff bars, but I have kind bars as well, so that's fine. That's the update. We'll check in in a bit. It's always a little concerning when you see a helicopter out and about here. Hopefully it's nothing. Rabbits are big out here. Welcome to Arrowhead Lake. Just stunning lakes along this whole section. All right, we've got a water crossing here at the Arrowhead Lake outlet. This section of trail around Ray Lakes has been more snow free than I thought. My trail runners are kind of dried out a bit, so I'm going to switch over to Crocs for this. Another lake, Dollar Lake. All right, it's almost 11. We've made it to Baxter Creek. Once again, we'll put on the Crocs to do this water crossing. And then I think I'm gonna do some electrolytes on the other side of the creek. That hits the spot. So I'm taking this little break here. Ever since I left Ridgecrest, I've been flip-flopping with um, a group of six. They're a big group, um, older, 
and just pretty much the same pace as me for the most part and the same ideas about where to camp, the same get up early and go get it even before the, the passes. So they were staying an extra night at Kennedy Meadows South and I thought I might gain some ground, but um, if they didn't do Whitney, then I wouldn't gain any ground. And they were, I saw them on the um, Forrester Pass yesterday. They passed my base camp as I was getting situated. And as I was leaving the bottom of Glen Pass today, they were coming down. So we keep uh, going back and forth with each other, which is kind of interesting. They're like the first, and it's only because they're a big group, so I kind of recognize them when I see them and hear them. There's one guy from the UK has a very distinct accent, so, um, and they do a lot of talking. So it's just interesting. I'm wondering, uh, if they'll catch up to me today or if I'll be able to green some ground. I really want to do a big mileage day today. We'll see how, how it goes as we get later in the afternoon. But um, they have also done some big mileage days. So we just uh, keep bumping into each other ever since Ridgecrest. So that it's just interesting. I have I've had other through hikers come and go, pass me by, I pass them, never to see them again. But this group, we just keep seeing each other so maybe until vvr um or maybe until we're out of the sierras who the heck knows that's it was a big avalanche here. The trail is in the middle of it. Guess what? Not too far after all that avalanche debris, I just happened to look that far out to see um, where the next water was. And we have done 800 continuous miles on the Pacific Crest Trail. Wow, that last 100 miles was hard. 800 miles, let's go. So my feet were still really pretty pruney. So I took an extra like 20 minutes and just really let my feet air out. They have improved quite a bit. So I have to keep an eye on that. If they get too pruney, I'll start getting some painful blisters. I've run into that problem before, not pleasant. Got like three water crossings in the next quarter mile or so. So I'm gonna put the Crocs on. I may just leave them on. This is the tamest of the three. All right, so we did three of the water crossings. I just hooked my Crocs on the whole time. We've got more water crossings coming up and I'm gonna put the trail runners back on for now. And then we'll just switch them back out again. All right, so this was without a doubt the sketchiest water crossing of the day. Actually went 40 yards upstream and crossed there where it was a little flatter. Uh, at the same time, another through hiker, Chatterbox, caught up to me, so we both crossed together. He's going to try and go for Pinchot today to set up for Mather the next day, which is what I want to do, but I just don't want to deal with that real sloppy snow. We shall see. First, we're going to get some more electrolytes. All right, we're about to get moving again. Boy, did I need some, some Gatorade. The water is ice cold. It's hitting the spot. I 
All right, it's getting close to four o'clock. We're just shy 10,000 feet, so we're gonna be climbing back over 10,000 feet. There was a campsite about a quarter mile back, but wanted to get a little more of this climb out of the way and also maybe be somewhere a little more secluded. So it looks like there's potential about a mile up the trail. So we just gotta keep climbing for a little longer. Right now we got some cloud cover, so it's nice, but most of this climb next to the uh, creek has been in the exposed sun. It's been pretty hot. Right now it feels good. All right, we are near the Sawmill Pass Trail Junction. We're back over 10,000 feet. Running water is not too far away. So we're gonna make this campsite work right here. There's no sun protection, but uh, it's only a couple of hours till sunset. So by the time I get everything set up and get situated, it'll be close enough. Whew, big day today, big day. All right, we're gonna wrap it up. It's almost seven o'clock, it's late for me. Just waiting for the sun to go down before I can um, eat. Ended up doing about 13 and a half miles, 800 miles, continuous, amazing. Glen Pass, um, almost, I think a little over 11 hours of hiking with probably a half hour to 45 minutes, uh, maybe more than one hour of break time letting the feet dry out and having to stop and start for water crossings, having to slow down for the snow. So what normally in the desert would have been easily a 20 mile day with the same time, it's 13 and a half and they were tough and I'm exhausted. So I'm just gonna keep hydrating. I'm gonna eat and I'm gonna crash and we're gonna do another pass tomorrow. All right, see you then.